I guess this is the day I've been waiting for for a while. I finally hit 1000 subs, so it's now time for a Q&A with me. Guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is John Sparkman. I'm a photographer in Birmingham in the UK, and this channel is uh, is primarily Fujifilm cameras and flash lighting. Uh, now, uh, I've been on I've been on uh, YouTube for I think eight years. One of the first videos I posted was just me bleaching some negatives as part of a university course module. But I never really uh, kind of pursued uh, building a, a subscriber base or making any specific content. Then a year or so ago, I got some nice gear, stuff I use for my kind of wedding photography. And uh, yeah, it has the capabilities to shoot some real high resolution images and videos. So I thought I'd start cranking out some videos on things I uh, kind of knew a little bit about, I guess. And uh, you know, I, I saw it building from like 500, 600, 700 subs. At that point, I was like, okay, Let's see if I can get to a thousand before my birthday, which was yesterday. And uh, on 11th of May, 2021, I hit a thousand subs. It was a very nice birthday present, so thank you to everybody who helped me on this one. Uh, but just before that, I put on my personal Instagram page, uh, Q&A questions, kind of what should you ask me? Is there anything you really want to know? I've got a fat list. I was not expecting the amount of questions that people have asked me. So I'm going to go through as many as I can. I'm going to keep them short and uh, yeah. Hopefully this uh, this gives you some indication of something about me or maybe a little bit of advice going forwards if you're making your own YouTube channel. First question, your most favorite camera to shoot with? That's gonna be this one, Fujifilm X-T3. I have had a couple of cameras in my time. Uh, if we're talking digital, I started 350D, then 20D, 5D Mark I, 6D, which was my favorite camera for years. Then I had a 70D on the side for a little bit. Then the X-T3 and the X-T20 as well as a companion camera, just in case. The X-T3 provides me with literally everything I need. I don't even really need to upgrade to the X-T4 as I'm uh, kind of more of a stationary uh, vlogger. I don't really go out. And if I do, um, that shake, which the IBIS of the X-T4 can uh, deal with, uh, I, I just ignore basically. <laughs> so uh, yeah, X-T3, very happy with it. Why did you decide to become a photographer? Uh, I have no idea why. Uh, I basically got a part-time job in 2010 in a printing lab in Cheltenham, affectionately called Snappy Snaps. And uh, yeah, it was bright green and yellow. It smelled of uh, kind of chemicals day in, day out. It was incredibly hot work. But that, I got to be the studio photographer on day one. So I kind of started on 27th of December, 2009, I think. And then the next day uh, I was in the studio shooting. I'd never shot in the studio before. So I got one of the uh, employees who was there to just show me around. And uh, yeah, they were, um, the photos were interesting, I'll give you that, but it was enough to give to the client and to uh, proceed with. Then I got kind of addicted to it, uh, processing film photography. I must have done three million plus, three million plus photos individually, uh, kind of color balanced and adjusted. So I got very fast with a, a certain program. And uh, yeah, I just took it from there, really. Can you show your very first photo shoot? Kind of couples on from that one. Uh, I will put it on screen here. Uh, and I believe the camera settings were hideous. They were not what a studio would need. So I don't think I even knew what ISO 100 would do to a, an image. Uh, and uh, yeah, my uh, fill versus key lighting was just, it's all over the place. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's, that's um, we've all got to start somewhere, right? What got you into photography also? Who inspires you and why? Very good question. Uh, what got me into photography? That plus I guess that my dad was a photographer. He gave me his uh, camera, uh, which I still shoot film on. It's been reconditioned. Uh, that was kind of growing up. I did a film photography course in 2006 at college. Dropped out after a year. The teacher said I would do nothing with it. I got a D. It was you know not a good time. Bad teacher is what I'm going to say. Uh, so that's kind of where it started. Plus snappy snaps. Who inspires me? Uh, I don't know, I can't pinpoint one person. Definitely, I would say Helmut Newton as a photographer, as a way of thinking and styling his images. He's always been very influential. Uh, the way he shoots, what he shoots, how he shoots is, is very interesting to me. Same with Richard Avedon. Uh, so all kind of the, um, the great 60s style, Gibaudan, people like that. How did you grow the channel? is a very good question. Um, I, I think the biggest mistake I made and the reason why I didn't hit a thousand maybe four years ago or something when I was first doing the 
kind of to, to camera pieces, I didn't know what to do. So, I mean, I, I have basically marketed myself as a photography channel. Uh, and, you know, when you're a photography channel, you're going up against people like Peter McKinnon. And uh, no chance, basically, <laughs> when you're going against him, you're not going to appear in the feed. You're not providing a specific answer to a question. Uh, so this is why I niched down. I did a little bit for a while of film photography. Uh, and then you've got great people like Matt Day who are doing film photography channels and they're very well established. And I just kept going oh, a little bit of film, a little bit of flash, a little bit of digital, a little bit of vlogging outside. Couldn't really put my finger on it. Uh, so I grew the channel by focusing down on Fujifilm equipment. So I had a lot of equipment. I could do unboxings and reviews and talk honestly to the camera about my opinions. And each uh, video would be somewhat related to that. So if you wanted a subscriber, there would be subscribers interested in Fujifilm. They wouldn't be like a Sony person or someone interested in makeup because I have a very set theme to my channel. So if, if I was to give advice, it's set a theme, set a niche. Uh, don't just be photography, be a certain aspect of photography and make sure each of your videos kind of relate back to that each time. Any advice for starting a channel? Uh, collab with people. Uh, I'm sure you know someone who has maybe got a thousand plus subs. Uh, see if you can get in on their video, make a collab and then they can collab on yours and tell each other to subscribe to each other's channels. Uh, I wouldn't go down the route of trying to make a viral video. However, you can use social media uh, things like TikTok, and you can get really good um, kind of explos explosive growth with them. Uh, as long as you are kind of leading everything back to the channel. It's like a website with marketing. You have all these outlets, social media and stuff, but they all go back to this one place, this channel. So I'd focus on that, and obviously see the question above, pick a niche. Uh, most expensive item. Uh, most expensive item I've ever owned was uh, the Canon 70-200 Mark II. Bought it new. I don't know why I bought it new. My camera was worth 300 quid, but the lens was two and a half thousand pounds. Um, my current most expensive piece of gear is the X-T3 still. Uh, and, you know, I, I've kind of, after 10 years, gone past the day of buying hilariously expensive things. And I'm now into the used market or just buying very specific things for very specific reasons. Most useless item, oh, I can definitely show you that, one second. Most useless item is this. This is a cage for an X-T3. Um, it was 80 pounds and I've used it maybe twice. Uh, I don't like using it. It gets in the way of the shutter button. I can't put a grip on the bottom, which means my batteries are just toast, basically. And I, I travel light, so I've only got a monitor and I've got a microphone and that's it. So I don't need one of those. Uh, for me, useless. Most used non-camera item is definitely the softbox. This is the Fote R 80 centimeter Octobox. It was about 30 pounds, 10 pounds for a grid. Uh, it's indestructible. It's made of like solid metal in the middle. It pops open like an umbrella. Uh, I've been using it for eight years. It's never broken, it's never damaged. It's got flaps on the inside so I can actually uh, fit a MagMod AD200. So, you know, I can put gels and stuff on the inside. And uh, yeah, I, I'd recommend it to literally anyone. I've used Profoto, uh, I've used Broncolor, um, softboxes in the near thousand pounds, and this is better. So, mm, sorry guys. Thoughts on social media? I don't use it really. Um, I probably upload to my personal Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook once a week, once maybe every two weeks or so. Uh, and I don't care about the likes, uh, it's not my thing. Um, I used to be, you know, multiple times a day, but that's not me anymore. Uh, if you're running a business like wedding photography, that is a different question. I have a wedding photography account on Instagram and I post daily or every other day. And that, that a lot more thought goes into it because I'm targeting specific people for a specific reason, uh, to get leads, to get people to the website. So. Uh, it's less about me showing people what I do and, and more about offering a service or answering a question for someone. How old am I? I was 32 yesterday, uh, which is mad. I feel younger. I still feel 20-something. I still can't grow a beard, uh, but at least I've got all my hair. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that one. How much do you make from photography? Uh, I cannot answer that because I'm not going to tell you, but... Um, I charge on average one to two thousand pounds for a wedding and I, with the exception of last year, have been shooting weddings since 2014. It's not my only job. 
Uh, and I also do event photography, so uh, boxing events and proms and things like that, where you make money on uh, after event sales, so prints and stuff like that. So using things like Pixie Set to sell pictures with a markup uh, basically means you can charge a minimal for the event day, and then you can recoup maybe four to five times as much at least in post sales and they're all automated so it's a pretty easy winner for that one best advice for a new camera uh if you're going to use it for video as well get one that can shoot in at least hd uh, preferably 4k don't worry about getting a full frame camera immediately i don't have one anymore make sure it is a brand which you are comfortable with so i changed to fujifilm because i like the dials and the twisty bits and the the, the, the native kind of um sensor that Fujifilm makes is very uh it's kind of all in one ecosystem but you know I had Canon that 60 I had was impeccable I love that camera and uh, if I hadn't made the jump to Fujifilm I would have stayed with Canon but I mean Nikon's fine uh you know just get one way <laughs> basically you can afford it don't have to buy new either so you know second hand's fine plans for the future channel uh, I want to get to 2,000 subs by this time next year uh, I would love to be able to post every two weeks uh, but time constraints, you know, I'm planning uh, several things and doing lots of stuff family-wise. Uh, so it's it's a bit hard to kind of do this setup in here and, and get it out. Uh, so yeah, yeah, 2,000 subs, I think I'd be happy with that one. Favourite art book? Uh, probably Sumo by Helmut Newton. It's a massive book and I wish I could get it off my shelf. But it's kind of load supporting at the moment. It's at the bottom because it's the biggest one. And if I took it off, I think that shelf probably would collapse. So I'm not going to do that. Channels to follow. Uh, I would say that Nick Carver is my favorite YouTube channel currently for photography. He takes you out with him when he goes shooting. He shoots on film, these massive panoramics of kind of uh, Orange County in America. And it's really interesting just to see a photographer's insight, framing, ideas, reason why he is or isn't taking a shot. It's these huge 30 minute videos and they're, they're really interesting. Uh, aside from that, Baumgartner restoration. If you enjoy watching someone restore like an old battered artwork, like repairing the holes and reframing it and uh, retouching it, incredible channel. If you go for the big channels, probably Corridor Crew, MKBHD, uh, kind of things like that. Um, Wendover Productions. I just like to know things. I'm uh, very much into documentaries and stuff. How do, how do you get free samples? Okay, good question. How do you get free samples? Don't expect to get free samples is probably the answer to that one. Uh, if you are making a channel and you are in a niche and you're in a really specific niche, so maybe you are a studio photographer only. You only do studio stuff and you're always talking about uh, studio lighting and stuff. You can write an email to the marketing department of uh, a brand and basically say, look, this is what I do, this is all I talk about. Uh, the reason why I'd like to make a video of your equipment is because I feel it's a good fit, I feel you would get some exposure from it, uh, I would love to critique any products coming up and obviously I'll return them. Don't expect to keep anything that they send you. Uh, and you know, don't, don't be ashamed or don't be disheartened if they say no or just don't reply, I mean it happens. Uh, you can't expect, you know, a camera company or whatever just to give you a thousand pound piece of gear and be like, it's yours. <laughs> you expect to give it back, and so just treat it as if it's a rental. Um, and give your honest opinions. Don't kowtow, don't be, uh, don't, don't be like, this is the best piece of kit in the world and expect them to give it to you because then you'll go to your next sponsored video and you say, this is the best piece of kit. It's not going to work. Be honest, say the good points are down, the bad points. Um, and, and yeah, you get a working relationship and, you know, they might send you some free stuff, which is pretty nice. TikTok or Instagram? I like TikTok. I spend way too long on TikTok watching. Um, Instagram was my favorite for years, but you know, not so much anymore. Uh, still have their place, but just for like browsing and entertainment, TikTok, I don't know how it does it. It's just hilarious. Computer setup? I have an iMac 27 inch, 2017. It's got, let's have a little look at the RAM. It's not that much to be fair. It is a 3.4 gig quad core i5 with 24 gig of RAM. Uh, I could have more gigs of RAM if I wanted to. Then I've got a terabyte SSD. I've got a three terabyte um, regular drive and then I've got 12 terabytes of other drives at the top um, and it's absolutely fine yeah you know it just sits in one place it doesn't really do anything best way to interact with models that's going to be an entire separate video uh, that is 
a lot of information to cover and the reasons why. But essentially, uh, best way to interact with models is be on the same level as them. Don't think because you're the photographer, you're better than them. Uh, don't exclude them from any of the, the viewing of the images. Don't make weird suggestions. Don't touch them. Basically, they're, they're not your property, so just treat them as a human being. You'll probably be fine. <laughs> Sorry, I've been in the industry for way too long. I've seen so many photographers um, get called up by, rightly so, called up by models or other makeup artists and um, really exposing them for their really crappy behaviour, basically. So I'll do an entire video about that one. How many photos do you own? Photos printed, probably five to six hundred. Don't really print anymore, even though I used to work in a printing lab. Raw photos, I would say 120, 130,000. Uh, I very rarely delete them either. Even the rubbish ones, like the blurry ones and the black shots and uh, you know stuff where it doesn't need, I will delete those, but the rest I keep. Uh, hard drives are so cheap nowadays that I just have no real reason to delete them. Uh, and then I use uh, smart previews and connect everything to a couple of catalogs on my SSD, generate all the smart previews, which means I don't even need to have the 120,000 RAWs on my computer. They're in sto safe storage, um, and then I can still access them, edit them, and produce some kind of uh, good internet res pictures. So, you know. Any accidents shooting? Uh, I smashed the back of my Canon 6D on a glass table when I was walking past it once. Uh, 160 pounds of repair. Yeah, there's pain in the backside. Uh, I have dropped a dropped the lens, so I dropped the 1855 off my camera, and it rolled down a dirt hill for about 40 foot just on its own uh, when I was changing camera lenses last year. Still fine. Uh, and, oh, let's have a little look. Have I done anything else? Oh yeah, I was changing a camera lens. I put a vintage lens on my old like 5D and I kind of put it in as a weird angle and it hit the mirror and the mirror just started going like this and it didn't work for the rest of the day. So uh, always bring two cameras and that was at a wedding as well. Favorite shoot, uh, probably a narrative shoot I did with a couple of friends down in Bristol, the red light bar. It's not a district, it's an actual bar themed like kind of red light. Uh, there was three or four people. Images were awesome. The collaboration, the teamwork, the lighting, the kind of creativity going through was incredible. Absolutely loved it. How long do you spend editing a video? Well, if you are doing what I said previously about finding your niche and finding your kind of thing you're good at and talking about that, you will very rarely have to do jump cuts or edits or cutaways. If you're trying to talk about something you don't really know about, such as breaking news or something which isn't in your niche, you're gonna spend a real long time editing. But I would say that if I spend maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes talking to camera, I'll get that edited within an hour and then another hour to put it online. Uh, if it is something bigger with lots of B-roll and stuff, maybe two, three hours. There's a kind of a slope where the, the payoff, for the amount of work you put in kind of declines. So I kind of keep it simple. I kind of do the least amount of cuts possible. And I definitely don't do kind of cuts in between words like that. Just, just you know, just little ones. Uh, don't do that at all. You can just hear me ramble. Uh, best tip for streamlining editing pictures. There is a free video by Sam Hurd, who's an excellent wedding photographer in America, on using smart previews, exactly how I do now. It basically means you can access all of your raw images without your raw images on the computer, still edit them, still export them, still make adjustments. I've got a catalogue with 34,000 pictures. It's nine gigabytes in size. So when I do eventually go to a laptop, pop it across, it's, it's like nothing. It's like the size of a movie. Uh, so Sam Hurd, I'll put the link in the description below as long as it still exists. Best online classes, uh, this is hands down, it is the Jake Hicks Gerald Lighting Workshop by ProEDU, sometimes called RGGEDU. Uh, he's a local photographer in the UK. He shoots with very strong gelled lighting, incredible style, uh, it's very niche in his own uh, world. So gelled lighting is like the leader of that. Very down to earth guy. Video is super informative, it's not too expensive, it's definitely cheaper than a lot of things I've bought for my cameras, and I've learned so much from it. So yeah, go find that, links down below as well. And this is the last one, so I hope you've stuck around. Uh, thoughts on critique. Critique is essential, uh, regardless of where you are in your photography career, or video, or whatever, art-based, critique is essential. Now what is different is f disseminating or figuring out what the intentions of the person who's given the critique is. So for example, uh, I would happily go to 
a lecturer at university and say, can you critique this picture? And they would say, mm, good, yes, I like the composition's good, the cropping's good, the color toning is good, maybe work on your lighting in this way, or have you thought about shooting with two people, or whatever like that. If you show a picture to someone and they just go, I don't like it, yeah, or what camera are you using? That's not helpful, is it? Like, it doesn't matter. That kind of stuff doesn't matter. Still accept the critique, but uh, take from it what you can. And a good person to give critique is someone who's spent a long time in the industry. Uh, some of them may be kind of short with you because they've been doing this for decades and they've had new photographers kind of asking them for, for years. Um, don't just get critique from your friends and family because they will be sycophantic and they will just say everything is good even if maybe some things may need changing. So <laughs> I'm gonna say, I definitely have seen an improvement through the last decade of my photography. Uh, I still want people to critique my work where possible, uh, but I don't want unsolicited critique. So I don't want someone going onto my picture and being like, oh, you know, your lighting's terrible. Like, uh, why didn't you try lighting with seven lights instead of two? Or, you know, that, you know, why did you hire that model instead of this? Stuff like that, it's not helpful, is it? Like, that's just someone venting because they feel that you should have the critique. But ask for it if you feel it's needed, take from it what you want, and discard the rest. So that was uh, my 1,000 sub Q&A. Hopefully I will do another one. Uh, 10,000 subs? I mean, hopefully I'll get there one day. So if, if I hit 10,000 subs, uh, hello, future John. And uh, thank you, I hope you've got a better studio at least by that point. <laughs> But that's it for now, guys. If you like the content, stick around, subscribe. Uh, also, comment down below if there's any suggestions, any books, any uh, online channels. Uh, you know, just, just have a big party, basically. I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.